everybody and welcome back to Phantom Weather Channel. Today we are talking storms and we're talking about storms in the Great Lakes. Now I am not at my house in southeast Michigan to talk about this in real time, but I figure we can still take a look at what is going on. And it starts here with an enhanced risk of severe storms across southern lower Michigan into northern Ohio and northwestern Pennsylvania for this evening into the overnight hours. This is going to be uh, potentially a couple different waves of severe storms and we're going to talk about that a little bit later on throughout the video. Now the primary threat with these storms is going to be damaging wind. Uh, we're going to have numerous reports of damaging wind gusts likely across the lower Great Lakes today. Some of these gusts could exceed hurricane force. So we're talking about the possibility of a few wind gusts getting over 75 miles an hour. In addition to that, we're looking at the chance for hail as well. Hail is going to be most likely with the storms over lower Michigan that develop later on this afternoon into the evening. Those are going to be those supercell storms and those supercell storms are going to bring us hail and they could also bring us tornadoes. Here's the tornado outlook right here. And this is something that we do have to pay attention to today. There's going to be two separate types of tornadoes that we can get today. The first tornadoes are going to be with the hail. Uh, we, we have a chance to get a couple of tornadoes across southeastern lower Michigan, which again, I am not there at my house today to get any footage for you guys, unfortunately, but uh, we are definitely still watching that across southern lower Michigan uh, as we could get these supercell storms producing a couple of spin-up tornadoes. And then the squall line develops as this thing moves south and the sun starts to set. By the time that this, these storms cross Lake Erie and head into Ohio and Pennsylvania, uh, there's going to be enough spin in the atmosphere Atmosphere and definitely enough instability as we go into the overnight to give us a continued threat of spin up tornadoes. So we're watching the tornado and hail threat in addition to the much higher threat for damaging straight line winds that could bring power outages and cause lots of tree damage in the area. Now let's go over a timeline for these storms. We're switching it up a little bit. We're taking the approach of going over the radar first, going over the impacts and whatnot first, and then talking about why a little bit more towards the end of the video. I think this is really important here to highlight first. So let's take a look at that simulated radar. This is 5 p.m. this afternoon. At that point, not much is going on. We got a couple of storms popping up in eastern Wisconsin, mainly south of Green Bay, north of Milwaukee, or so right between West Bend and Sheboygan, Wisconsin. We do have some stronger storms popping off, but we don't have much going on out in Michigan until we get towards about 7 or 8 p.m. according to the latest model data. At that point we can see some clusters of stronger storms entering into western Michigan. We are watching the uh, US 131 corridor as we get into 6 to 7 p.m. here and then eventually these storms are going to encroach on Mount Pleasant and into the more central Michigan kind of regions here. We can see a few separate clusters taking over as we get later and the sun begins to set. But this entire time frame here I'm thinking 6 to 9 p.m. That's when we have to be on really high guard alert for the potential of any storms that want to develop across Michigan uh, to, to start spinning and have some tornado threat with them. So we're watching that even before the sun goes down, but it's after the sun goes down that these storms organize a little bit more and the wind threat becomes a little bit higher than the overall tornado threat. At 10 p.m., we got a lot of severe weather activity going on east of I-75 here. We're talking about the heartland of Metro Detroit into the thumb. We're talking about Flint, Lapeer, areas like that. You guys are all going to be watching the threat for strong storms as we get into 10 p.m. this evening. Have those ways to receive warnings when you go to bed at 10 or 11 o'clock later on tonight. Beyond midnight, these storms should be pushing out of Michigan, but it's really not until about 1 or 2 a.m. that we're going to see that happen. And uh, you know, up until that point, there's going to be more severe weather and more flooding. And I know that a lot of you guys in Metro Detroit saw your fair share of flooding last night. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that and recap a little bit towards the end of the video. But you guys don't need any more rain. Uh, so if you are under a flash flood warning, you're going to want to know about it. So have those ways to receive warnings. Again, these storms push out of Metro Detroit as we get into about 2 a.m. At that point, let's zoom out to the northeast so we can see what's going on with the rest of the storms. We got an organized squall line here from Metro Detroit all the way over into central New York. This is a broad stretching MCS mesoscale convective system that's going to be approaching northern Ohio and northern Pennsylvania as we get to about the 1 or 2 a.m. hour. Uh, so, you know, by at that point, Cleveland, we're watching severe storms. Pittsburgh, we're going to be watching strong and severe storms as well later on, you know, between like 3 or 4 a.m. or so. And this threat really doesn't wind down until we get into about 6 or 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. At that point, it's going to be approaching the higher elevations of the northern, uh, northern Appalachian Mountains here, and we're not going to see much of a continued threat into tomorrow. But definitely, late this afternoon, through the evening, into, into the overnight, it is an open window 
window across the lower Great Lakes to get severe weather. Now, the timing is still a little bit uncertain because we need that cap to break across Michigan. But as soon as that happens and as soon as we see a storm developing in central Michigan, all bets are off. So make sure you have those ways to receive warnings. There's going to be some strong storms happening later on this evening. And in addition to severe weather, again, we're going to have a lot of rain. Look at how these rain totals pile up as we get into tomorrow morning. Several areas could get several inches of rain, especially where storms train over the same area more than once. And if you live in Metro Detroit or Northern Ohio, you do not need any more rain. We have a slight risk of excessive rainfall across the lower Great Lakes into West Virginia and Central Pennsylvania as well for this purpose, because look at some of these rain totals across uh, South southeastern Michigan, especially the southern portion of Metro Detroit. This is the rain that we had in the 24-hour period ending early this morning at 8 a.m. this morning. There are, were some areas, especially across southwestern Wayne County, that picked up six to eight inches of rain, seven inches of rain in a 24-hour period. That is insane. Again, I am not here in Metro Detroit right now. I, I'm in northern Michigan right now. Uh, we saw about, it looks like an inch or two where I am in northern Metro Detroit. The southern part of Metro Detroit saw six to eight inches of rain. I mean, that, that, that is crazy. Canton, Michigan was underwater in spots, especially the several roads blocked. It's a bad situation right now. Uh, we've seen power outages last night. This is why we had all that flooding, six to eight inches of rain across that part of Wayne County, even into northern Monroe County, eastern uh, Washtenaw as well. Several areas getting oh, well over four inches of rain. And the same goes for Northern Ohio as well. Look at this Sandusky east towards Cleveland, south towards Mansfield, that, that triangle right there. Several areas in those gold shades picking up well over four inches of rain. Uh, a lot of rain has fallen in a short period of time and we got more of it coming this evening and overnight. So it's very possible that areas that are still flooded right now are just going to get more flooded and the people that do have power outages right now could have a longer time before power gets restored because flooding and power outages are both going to be a concern as we go throughout the evening and head into the overnight. So this is why we really have to be watching the radar and keeping an eye on those warnings and watches that do get issued later on today. Now let's talk a little bit about why we are seeing what we are seeing. If you're wondering why we have all those excessive heat warnings and heat advisories across the Midwest, this is a big reason why. It's not just the temperatures, it is the dew points. It is extremely muggy when you step outside. Uh, we got dew points in the upper 70s to near 80 degrees across a large portion of the Midwest here. And when you add 90 degree temperatures to that, the heat index is going to feel well over 100. So that's why we have all those warnings. But it is also why we are getting severe storms of the magnitude that we are expecting this evening because let's zoom into that initiation area right over Michigan here. This is the dew points we are expecting and this model tends to underdo it a little bit but this is, these are the dew points that we are expecting right around the time I'm, I'm expecting this video to go up at 4 p.m. this afternoon. 81 degree dew point. 8-1 in Grand Rapids. That is extremely, extremely muggy across that area. Uh, it's very, very tropical dew points out here across Michigan. And what happens when you get all that moisture? You get a ton of instability. Let's take a look at our energy chart here as we go throughout time. You can see these reds and purples across Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan. That is because we have a lot of moisture, and this is just rising those air parcels into the atmosphere at a rapid rate. That's how you get that strong instability, and that is how you get those strong storms developing. The more of this energy that we have in the area, the more reds and purples that we see on the screen. If a storm is able to develop there, it is going to take off and grow very quickly. You add a little bit of wind shear to that, those winds turning and twisting with height, that is how you get severe weather, and that is what we have in place today. So guys, that's all I got for you today. It's going to be really important. Again, I know I've said this a lot, but you definitely want to have those ways to receive warnings. Uh, not just one way or two ways, because remember, a phone line could be down. The internet could be down. You want to have multiple ways to receive warnings. Keep your phone on. Keep that TV on. And do what you got to do to keep yourself safe later on this evening into the overnight tonight. Other than that, that's all I got for you. And I will talk to you guys in the next video.